Hey developers, what's going on? Today we're talking about composition over inheritance. And this is something you're going to hear tossed about a lot when you're talking about object-oriented programming, that you should prefer composition over inheritance. Um, and I'm going to say, like, the, the, the idea, all we're really saying with composition, and we'll start to do this in code shortly, is that we are going to make our objects out of other objects. And if you, for me, the first time I saw that, this was kind of mind-blowing. I mean, I think, for me, a lot, for there was a period where I, you know, like, everything had to be a primitive, right? Like, any property that an object had had to be a, had to be a string, it had to be an integer, it had to be a Boolean, etc. Um... And I think this is a really important step in your progress as a developer is to start to understand, no, you can, that's what object-oriented programming lets you do is create all the types that you want. And remember, you've been working with objects the whole time anyway, right? That's, I mean, an integer is an object. A string is an object. They're just objects that are part of, they're just built into the Apex programming language. So let's hop in here and let's take a look at exactly what, what does that look like anyway when we start to do it in code, right? All right, so I've stubbed out a few things for us here to get us started. Uh, let's go over our shopping carts. So we've got a shopping cart class. I'm going to minimize that. And I left us a few notes up here to kind of guide the conversation, what we want to talk about. is um, All right, so composition, it really, it's all about having an is a versus a has a relationship. So, you know, a, a car is a vehicle, right? So... Uh, we can use inheritance to model that kind of a relationship. But a car, you know, a wheel is not a car, right? A car has a wheel. So that relationship from car to, to tire, right? Car to engine, right? All these things a car has, we would want to model through composition by creating our own types and using those to compose our our vehicle class, our car class, right? Uh so that is when people talk about composition or composition over inheritance, that's what they're talking about. So when you're designing your objects, you have to think a little bit. Is this a is a is a relationship or is it a has a relationship? Now the great thing about composition is it allows us to do a couple other really important things that we're going to see as we start to implement more and more of our design patterns. Composition allows us to use dependency injection. And that maybe will be that might be the topic of our next video. <laughs> Actually, is like what is dependency injection? But and then once we have dependency injection, this allows mocking, which is a really fantastic way to write good, fast, efficient unit tests. Versus, I think, and I'm guilty of it. What we tend to a lot of times write in the Salesforce development industry are integration tests that we call unit tests. So stay tuned. That might be uh, another couple videos. At some point, I actually want to start doing more design patterns. Uh, but I thought this stuff was really important to talk about. And I'll let you in on a little secret. While at some point, we will do a video on the strategy pattern. The strategy pattern is really just kind of a, I think, a, a fancy way of saying prefer composition to inheritance. So let's uh, let's get into it. Let's talk about the code, right? So let's just so we have our class here of shopping cart, and our shopping cart needs a way. So this is something, right? Our customers, you know, they buy their whatever products we sell, right? And they get put into the shopping cart, and then we have to pay for stuff. So we said so maybe our shopping cart should actually have a list of products, but yeah, I'll give it one right now. Just kind of I'm gonna just say list. Let's say product two. Call products. I feel like it should have that. Okay, so it has a list of products. Uh, you, we're just going to use the Salesforce uh, S object, you know, product two for now. But it needs a way. So we have this ship order method, but our, our shopping cart also needs a way to submit payments. And in this case, right, we have no idea. We don't know until runtime, right? Are our customers, do they need to pay with, say, a credit card, a debit card, American Express, Visa, crypto? If we take that, all these, we don't know. We don't know until runtime. So if we try to model all of this in shopping cart, right? So we could either, like, maybe make this a virtual class and we could start to, you know, have a, you know, a, an American Express shopping cart and a Visa shopping cart. Uh, and that starts to get cluttered and hard to maintain really, really fast. And what we want to think about is, right, like, so this is a payment system. Shopping carts are not payment systems. Shopping carts have a payment system. 
So we what we did here is instead of, I think I'm gonna maybe show you kind of like the bad way that I feel like I would see sometimes. So we'll say public process payment. And we'll just say string, whoops, not pad, payment. Never type in these videos, payment, type. All right. And then, you know, I don't know. If type equals, you know, Amex, you know, do this, right? If payment type is Visa, do that. Uh, and that starts to lead into this really cluttered, hard to maintain, hard to test code base. So we don't, we don't want this. We're just going to, we're going to get rid of that for right now. All right. So over here, we have a, well, we have an interface. We created the iPayment system, iPayment system interface. So this is our super class. And it has one method. I'm going to get rid of that, actually, that process these arguments. That's actually for another, sorry. That's for another video I was thinking about later on. Um, so it has a one method, Boolean process payment, right? So now any class that implements this interface must also, you know, implement the process payment method. So all our concrete payment payment systems have to implement process payment. So I've created, I've stubbed out three concrete payment systems. So let's go to go to our debit card payment system, right? And we want this to implement I payment system. Right? This is one of the very nice features there of IntelliJ is how quick it is to implement these sort of methods if we want to. Um, so I'm going to say we're just we're going to have all of these return true for now, and I'm just going to put a debug statement in there just to you know quick validation that it's right, I hit caps lock that it's doing what we want. Um, we'll say it's processing processing debit card. Okay. Now. And now let's go to our credit card payment system. And same thing, it's going to implement I payment system. Process payment, that means it has to have a process payment method. Right. Beautiful thing about interfaces and polymorphism, right? So everything I feel like we've been talking about for six months, I'm hoping you can all start to see it coming together, right? We've got our super classes and we've got our polymorphism and our composition and our inheritance and all these things that really let us write awesome, beautiful, efficient, scalable, loosely coupled Apex code, right? So let's just get a debug statement in there. And we're going to say processing, this is what, a credit card credit card. All right. And now to our crypto. All right. And this one implements iPayment system. All right. So we have three concrete payment systems, right? Processing. Processing crypto. All right. Let's compile these. All right, so now we've, we've got our interface, right? We have our super class, right? And now we have got our three concrete payment systems. So what we need to do is modify our shopping cart class to take advantage of that. Um, and you know what, for right now, just because it's not really part of what we're doing, I'm gonna get rid of that list of products. Um, we're just gonna keep this simple and work on only what we really care about. So I'm gonna say I payment system, all right? Payment system, bam, all right? so. This is such an important thing, I feel like, to understand in object-oriented programming, and it took me a while, right, is that you don't have to do everything. This, you'll hear this called primitive obsession. You don't have to do everything with primitives, with strings and integers and Booleans, right? You can create your own data types. Those data types that Apex gives you, strings, integers, Booleans, floats, longs, right, they're just objects, right? They're just objects that are given to us by the class. And we can create our own objects and we can do anything else we want. So when we created that iPayment system, right, I can put that on the on the far left, right, as a type, just like I could put a string, just like I could put an integer. iPayment system. And because it's a super class, any subclass, any concrete class that implements payment system can be swapped in there at runtime. 
So now let's do, whoop, I need to not end my ship order class, right? We need to give this a constructor, all right? So let's just say public shopping cart. And we expect a payment system to be passed into our constructor. Payment system, payment system. And we're going to say this dot payment system equals payment system. And that is all there is to it. Now let's give it a process. Let's give our shopping cart a process payment method. How about public? And we're just going to say void for now. It doesn't return anything. Process payment. And now we're going to use something you're hearing here called delegation. So we're going to say this dot payment system dot process payment. The shopping cart is not actually processing the payment, right? The payment system is doing that. But the consumer of our shopping cart, they don't need to know that, right? That's, uh, that's just, that is abstracted away from them, right? So we've taken this principle, and this is an important principle, right, in object oriented programming, is we've taken what we think varies. So what could, what could cause our shopping cart class to change? And in this case, it was our payments, right? What kind of payment does our consumer use at runtime? That causes our shopping cart class to change. So let's abstract that away. So we try to encapsulate, I'm sorry, encapsulate what varies. So we took the payment system and we made it its own object, right? And we are going to delegate payment processing to that class, even though the shopping cart class, so maybe they're the front end component that's calling it, right? They may do, you know, shopping cart process payment. They do not know, do not need to care. That developer could care less about the inner workings of this, that it's actually using the payment system class and calling a method that it's delegating that responsibility out to another class, right? So this is Okay, so we've got composition and a little bit of delegation going on here. So um, I think I compiled everything, but I'm going to do it because I got off on this tangent about delegation. Um, so now let's go and let's open up our anonymous Apex. And I am going to create an iPay. Let's call, let's say, credit. New, new credit card payment system. And okay, we'll just... Uh, We'll do one for uh, crypto too, right? My payment system, crypto, is new. new crypto payment system. All right. Probably enough just to test our principle for now. So we'll just say, so remember our constructor. So we're just going to pass in this other object in its constructor again. We talk about like primitive obsession, right? Like your constructors, right? They don't just need to be strings, floats, ints, booleans, right? That can be other objects. So we are going to pass in a credit card object into our shopping cart constructor. Let's run that. See what we get back. Processing credit card, exactly what we expected, right? So let's uh, let's swap that in. Let's give it a uh, let's give it a crypto. We should see that we processed uh, crypto. All right, process encrypt, so it worked, right? So again, that is composition, right? Let's just real quickly, let's look at the, uh, the UML diagram and talk about maybe some of the principles that we have reviewed so far. Let me give us a little space here. All right, so we had our shopping cart class and our shopping cart class had, was used, had a composition relationship with payment system. All right, and had a process payment method and a ship order method. Uh, down here, we had our three concrete payers, right? Our three concrete payment systems, credit card, debit card, crypto, right? So our shopping cart, right, by using composition, could, could use any of these objects at runtime. And because of that, you know, because they're concrete classes, know that whatever it gets passed in is going to have a process payment method. So that's it. That's composition. Honestly, it's basically the strategy method at the same time. Um, and a little bit about delegation, a little bit about primitive obsession. I maybe added bonuses to the video. Hope this was helpful. Uh, it's actually pretty short. I'm looking at my clock. See, we're at just under 15 minutes. So 
I'm going to wrap this up, and hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, please uh, thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. If you think it could be better, let me know in the comments, too, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.